athletes, on what happened. Athletes uh, are driven and ambitious and, uh, you know, uh, result focused and oriented because orientated because everything is coming. Also sponsors and investors and money and success in a way. Mm-hmm. But uh, where athletes are the most successful and you've touched it really beautifully now, uh, in a way, uh, one thing is one side of it. Others see you as you see yourself or as they yeah. see themselves. So yeah. the higher you elevate, develop yourself and evolve yourself, the more you will meet other people who as well are in the same vibration and understand more stuff and, and respect. And yeah. uh, when athletes begin to realize this, uh, and of course, uh, some things are not given, some things are not self-granted, you need to go through adversity and a lot of hard, hard yes. shit. Oh yeah, to for get sure. this and to understand this, um, but uh, I know that you are working now uh, in China and uh, yes. you have different uh, as well uh, athletes that you coach, uh, and and you are doing yourself, uh, um, you are doing the inspirational uh, work that you are doing, and the yes. things that you are transmitting, I see it that way, and uh, genuine coaches uh, that uh, produce and create genuine athletes are uh, uh, giving this fulfillment and understanding that athletes not only look for the right emotion for the right thing and for the right uh, i don't know uh, this equipment or coaches and everything but they they find this inner strength and they go through even as you said maybe it was not a good emotion but it drove you through it yeah you for through. sure so Sometimes sure. you don't need to understand everything and uh, figure out everything. You just need to be in that zone, in that moment, and strong, and, and be actually connected to that internal power that brings you through and forward and opens the doors, as you said. You don't, we, we really do not know what we do not know. Uh, so yes. the blind spot is big. This is like yes. more than 90%. We don't know. Yes, so I agree. Not to look not to be influenced by the results, not to be influenced by a lot of parents that are influencing and coaches and sponsors and everything. So this is what makes and creates a genuine athlete to build up. You, you, you said very well. You said, you said well. And um, more I realized, more I met coaches who I really respect and stuff like that, more you realize how humble, how humble and how simple they are and how much it's about giving and and less than receiving about receiving you know those are the those are the things that it's a paradox of life it's about more you give more you receive more it's about others more it's about you because more it's about others you care about others and you're trying to as a coach as a coach you're trying to to give to others and and create a value for them more they want to be with you because you give it to yourself because when you give to others you give but the understanding of unconditional presence love not as a emotion but condition and, and understanding that's that's powerful and that is what if athletes could have that chip but we need moments and situations to get that in the yeah it's not easy because yeah. uh, there's a saying as you know you know when the Student is ready. Uh, when uh, how is the, I forgot yeah, about it. When the student it. is ready, the coach, the teacher appears. Exactly, like exactly. That. So everybody have their popcorn. You know, you put all the popcorns in a microwave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. You now, so you know, not everybody pops at the same time, yeah. and some of them never pop. You yeah. know, which is which is completely fine. Yeah, which is completely fine. That's the way it goes. So. So for me, when you said about players, the, the, the philosophy that I approach is be, it's about working on their mindset. Because once you work on their mindset and you help them to be in a growth state of mind versus the fixed state of mind, it reflects on all other areas in their tennis-wise, which is connected to the uh, technical, tactical, emotional, physical area, whatever. But most important, it reflects on their way they handle people around themselves. Because you need parents, you need agents, you need all these things because you cannot climb the mountain alone. Mm -hmm. It takes a team. Every aspect is super important. So me as a coach, I make sure 
that that the CEO of the company has the right mindset so they learn how to use every department for the company they're growing because you cannot have lawyers working in a company if the mailman is not delivering on time you mm -hmm. cannot have a CEO making decisions if they don't have all the data in front of them so if the player is not aware of these things the company will fall apart because every department will pull in their own thing, thinking that they're the most important. But the CEO understands that every department is the most important mm -hmm. and that every department in their own time is doing the most crucial work for the company. And that's my job. My job is to make them equipped with enough skills the, how to put themselves in a growth state of mind every single day. So when they go on the court, they are looking for the process versus result. When they go on the meeting, they're looking for how can I create a value for this sponsor, not what this sponsor can do for me, because that's not the way to do the business. When they go to their parents, they realize, how can I listen to my father and the mother? Because they love me. They come from the place of love. Mm -hmm. So I need to understand that because they want to wish the best for me. Maybe they don't know what is the best for me, but they wish the best for me. So you need to understand when you speak to them from what place each person is coming. Mm -hmm. And that's for me what creates the person with the right mindset so they can handle the whole team. Because when you're becoming a professional tennis player, you need to make decisions. And I not only one per year. You need to make them many per day. Mm -hmm. And that's for, for me what a great coach does, plus work on the court, which is the requirement. Mm -hmm. But I believe every coach can approach that because there's, you're learning every single day and stuff like that. But to deal with their mindset and to understand, to guide them, to guide them in a certain parameters, but let them grow. Because that's the best. Because as a coach, you need to be on the side and put them in a situation. Once they're in a situation that is tough, you want to be there when they turn around. Instead of putting them in the situation where it's easy and you're telling them what to do, bam, 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 so your ego feels better, that is just making, that is handicapping them. Mm -hmm. Our job is to mentor them. Our job is to put them in a problem-solving situation once they face situation which they should face every single day on the court, they turn towards you and they ask the questions or you ask them a question. So they figured it out. So that's what you should be doing on the court. And outside the court, you should also ask them the questions about their team, how they want to proceed. I ask my players, when they finish the match, that, that girl that was on the, on the stands and that mom, are they going to buy a racket because of her? Did my player inspire them to buy a racket? Did we create a value for this tournament? Did more tickets got sold because of us, because we were on this tournament? That's the value we need to bring. Once you start thinking like that, then people actually want to be connected with you because you make everybody better. You make Babola better, Wilson better. You make the WTA better. You make your sponsor investors because once you're commercial and let's say Peugeot is behind you, they want to connect because they know you are a trustworthy, you're hardworking, you're humble, you're grateful. Those are the values that people connect. But you can only develop those values if you teach them and apply them every single day that you face a certain things so that's for me a number one thing that i try to develop because if somebody goes off this court and they want to be a better mother a better father a better truck driver they want to play tennis you did your job because that's our job our job is not to get the paycheck our job is inspire other people that they can be better and that they want to do certain things. That's our job on the tennis court. And, and we for have me, the best, best times are now for this, uh, in a way, regarding the social media and everything, how we can influence, of course. inspire. But life is learning. So if a coach is learning and can transmit this phase of learning. Uh, Bravo. Now we're coming to another way. The best way to teach is to do. 
So if your vocal is not equal as your action, mm -hmm. forget about it. How the coach can coach the player is by inspiring them by their own work I'm that they do it. every yeah. single day. And what work do you do? Your habits. Your habits inspire the player. If you go in the morning and you do the running and you do the teaching and you do the reading and you do the exploring and the player comes in like, oh, wow, look at my coach. Look at what happens. You bring different energy with yourself because you are that. That's it. Exactly. And that's what, because it's surround yourself with the people that you want to become. Mm -hmm. So the people in your team, it's not about their knowledge that they have only for the fitness. Mm -hmm. It's about their habit and their lifestyle they have. So if your fitness coach is up and running, ready for practice, always on the dot, always learning, always eating properly. What do you think the player is going to do? It's going to reflect on them because we are reflection. Michael Jordan, Jimi Hendrix never taught anybody, but everybody, millions and pe millions of people play guitar and play basketball, basketball because of them. Because they were inspiring others with their mastery. Mm -hmm. So your job as a coach or your agent or whatever, you should inspire other people by the mastery and passion you have for yourself and your work that you do. Not only two hours on the court, but 24 so hours life. in your day. Life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's for me the, 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 the most important that when, when the teammates are coming, when the people are coming to the team, what kind of lifestyle they have. They can be amazing coach, but a player is not picking up on the words they say. Players are picking up on their habits. Mm -hmm. On the frequency they bring every single day, because the, if we if we go from the from the game point when you have a match, match is what not even twenty percent of your uh, life in a yes. uh, in a month. The yes. majority of time you spend on training. Yes, and training as well. If you look at life, is not the whole day. It's not eighty percent of the day, but hundred percent. What you do the rest of the time influences your training influences your match influences your life so it's a your match is a reflection of your training your actions on the court are a reflection of your attitude yeah how do you deal on practice with adversity if you are of course you need to be faced with adversity so are you are you going to acknowledge and uh, and say curse and this is too hard and this is this or you're actually going to train your attitude and say, it is what it is. I'm not going to make it worse. That's the first step of moving forward, not making it worse. It's not easy to be positive, but I'm saying, let's don't be negative. Let's don't verbalize it. Because once we verbalize it, there's a big chance it's going to happen. So I'm not saying be happy, be all, you know, yeah, rainbows. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, don't cut your own legs. Mm -hmm. That's the start. Give yourself a chance to move forward, to learn from it, to see. So that's why practice is important. That's why when you go to the restaurant, it's important. That's also where you learn. You learn your things, the manners. How do you treat others? You need to know that the person who's organized a tournament, the tournament director is not the most important person on the tournament. It's not. It's the driver. It's the ball boy. It's the volunteer. How do you treat them? It's what we How see now. I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's what we see no. now in this situation of uh, the quarantine and pandemics. Who are the important people in our lives? The people that work, where they work, what they do for us, what they exactly. do, and how low they are paid, how low they are respected in a way. And, and uh, exactly. In 150 million. We know the Spanish, the Spanish lady said, you know, why are you coming to me for the answers? You pay me. Uh, 1800 euros per month go ask Messi or Ronaldo who you paid 150 million dollars okay uh, which is okay I'm not saying about that and now we are all investing in 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 doctors and everything but the question for me why we did not do that earlier why we did not invest in important people before that's the question. So once you go in a tournament, invest in a volunteer because because of her, there's a tournament because the prize money comes from the sponsors. That's okay. But the tournament is running because of volunteers. If there's no volunteers, tournament, would, there's no way they can pay for all of that. Or you would not have a big check in your pocket when you win because you need to pay. So you need to go out there and make sure and you never know in today's social media. And you should not do it because of that, but you understand that everybody's a newspaper. 
Everybody is uh, not newspaper. Everybody is a uh, is uh, the writer, the um, how you call it, the newspaper reporter. Today, a little girl, if if you see, you know, you took time for her. You took time for her to take a picture. Then just pass. She was waiting for you. You take a picture. Bam. She writes. My childhood hero just took a picture with me. Thousands of people are going to see that. You are spreading goodness or you're spreading bad. You choose. You have a choice every second. Every and day today, when you wake up. We are m- under the mic- microscope, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And fortunately. So it's up to you how you're going to see it. Are you going to use the day world to spread kindness, and to spread hard work, to, sp- uh, to spread empathy? Or are you going to spread selfishness? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. up to you. Yeah. Now, don't tell, me, don't tell me today's media is bad. No, today's media is good. It's like saying dynamite, how you use it. Are you going, you going to go explode the village or are you going to break the, the hill and make the tunnel inside? It's up to you how you use the dynamite. Mm-hmm. Great. This is also dynamite. I'm sorry. But how you use it mm-hmm. makes a complete difference. So we, need, we have a choice every single day between stimulus and response. We, call, we have a gap that is called power of choice. Mm-hmm. We can work on that by learning how to control that gap, which you, you know for sure, which is meditation, which is small daily disciplines, where you learn that, the, that, that focus is a lamp. And you, through meditation, you get stronger lamps so you can stay longer on the spot, yeah? Mm-hmm. So you can, you can immediately put the lamp on like, okay, I have a choice now. Should I react or should I not react? Should I be on this level of behavior or should I not? You have a choice, always, mostly always, but we are talking about a tennis world, you know? They ask me like, oh, what's the bad day in tennis? If you're not injured, there's no bad day in tennis because tennis is a luxury. Mm-hmm. Tennis is a luxury. So don't tell me there's a bad day. I understand there's disappointments. Disappointments come from expectation. Expectation is good to have, but what kind of expectation you have? You need to expect your, for yourself to give everything you have today and learn, no matter what happened, I'm winning if I'm playing tennis. If I'm yeah. playing tennis, I'm winning. It can be disappointing. I lost the tournament first round, all this. In the end of the day, when you, when you close it, even if you played ITF, you had a one point or you were Grand Slam, you benefited from tennis because you became a better person. You see in the world, you're creating a relationship. You taste many different cultures. You see how other people live. You create a relationship for the rest of your life. I mean, that's freaking jackpot. Better than jackpot. That jackpot. Nobody is forcing you to play tennis. Yeah. It's your yeah. choice. <laughs> if that's your choice, then don't complain. Yeah. And that's but, it. Yeah, but to get there, uh, you as a coach uh, can give that. And there are a lot of, of course, coaches and parents and people who can give that uh, understanding and then broader, you know, horizon of, of looking on the world. But maybe you, you mentioned disappointment and, and the expectation. Yes. Uh, can you wrap this? Uh, yes. Because disappointment, you are disappointed. And if you do not check, you know, your checklist, did you do this, 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 that you can be disappointed, that you even have the luxury to be disappointed. But can you uh, please uh, emphasize this and explain? Yes. With the no problem. With the comparison of uh, male and female, ladies and boys ha huh. maybe the difference first i will i will go on this part where you call a disappointment disappointment comes after we cannot close the gap mm-hmm. gap happens where we at and where we want to be this is the gap so what we do when i coach is we close the gap how you close the gap you bring back the goals closer on the reachable level so with ever actions you're doing next you cannot say, you know, I want to be a Grand Slam champion and your next action is I want to sign up for ITF tournament. Shoot. You're going to get freaking disappointed immediately so you sign up because even if you win it, you're not going to be a Grand Slam champion. So you bring down the goal. You say, you know what? I'm going to sign up for ITF tournament and I'm going to play quarterfinal. That's my optimum goal. Okay? 
Mm -hmm. uh, above that is phenomenal. Below that, okay, let's see what happens and stuff, whatever. So you, you give yourself as a coach, you give them that goal that is yes. right above their mm -hmm. comfort zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you do that. That's number one thing. Bam. Then we sit down and we say controllables versus non-controllables. Those are the things that are in our control. It's our attitude. It's our behavior. It's the patterns of the play we want to do. So we set up a checklist of those things. So once you go after your goal, even if you don't get it, but if you checked the things that you were going after that are under your control, you are winning. You are on the proper path. That's called process, my friend. Mm -hmm. That's called failing. In, you want to invite failing in your life. Fail, fail much as possible mm -hmm. and keep going forward. That's the, we know that. Everybody said it before me. I'm not saying any, that's, People who are successful are failing and they're successful because they continue after they fail. Yeah. Yeah. And now we come to the men and women. And for me, it's, it's how I seen it. People say, this is one thing. People say men are more mentally tougher than women. They are more emotional in tennis, let's say. I say yes and no. Let's say in men. In men, you have a serve that is a big weapon. And it's, you break, you play, let's say you play me, you break me and you are up 4-3, uh, okay? Or 5-3, or you break me. And you can, or 3-2, and you know you can relax a little bit more on your return because you have your serve. To, usually people close it. They close the set with their serve. So that gives them one game mentally relaxed. Or men has a great serve. You're down love 30. There's a big chance with two, three good serves, you're going to come back and win the game. And women, if you're not Serena Williams or let's say Karolina Pliskova, you don't have a luxury of big forehand or big serve humongously so you cannot finish in one or two shots so what that means women tennis you're constantly in the red doesn't matter if you break somebody or you don't break somebody you constantly are in a danger of breaking or winning the serve so that for me says it's much tougher to play women tennis mentally much tougher that's why i i, I top top the hat for the women because they they're actually knowing what's going on. They're handling it pretty well. I think, uh, sorry, I think that in life is the same. We men have it much easier, not to compare or anything, you know what I mean, but uh, ladies are so strong. We, we should just always just appreciate. Uh, come on, and, 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 just, I, I give you, come on, it, it, going out and how much they need to take care of makeup, doing this and doing that, shower. I mean, they're, I'm, I'm talking about small things. I'm, I'm talking about once a month, they have a, a period, my friend. It's a pain. We have, I have a problem. I don't know, I'm complaining about some stupid shit. They have a freaking pain. <laughs> you know? We men are so spoiled. We, and, and when we, we are, recognize and, this and understand this, yeah. That's, we, that's we and that's why I ask you, because I know you had uh, experience with uh, ladies. So I'll say this. I will say this. I'm not going to say women or men, because I see it also in a men on a different yeah. level. This is the key. Sometimes men do it better, sometimes not. But usually men do it better. They have a chance to separate who they are as a person and who they are. Or I'm not going to separate. They can maybe better fake it. Because as a man, we are learned to be tough. And the men, we are learned to not show emotions. As a man, you know, you go in the bar and say, take a photo. And the man says, you know, who is handsome? Everybody's handsome. We all think we can, we can do whatever. Men, women, you know, if you take, oh, I, today I cannot, I, my hair, this and that. So it comes the way we perceive ourselves. Yeah, the you culture. Know? And, and the the culture. And uh, like I told you about the tree, you need to go backwards and see everything. So this is how I see it with the, with the, with the athletes. Knowing who you are and 
knowing who you as a tennis player identity is a two different people. The emotional problem happens when those two things are together. So once you finish a tennis match and you cannot separate when you're talking to the coach or somebody, you cannot describe you as a tennis player, you go on the side and say, Yure, you know what? At 5-4, you choked, mother trucker. You choked. Instead of, going, instead of going big on the serve, you went kicker, he burned you down the line. You know what? Next time, you need to go big serve, 40-30, first serve, risk it. Sometimes athletes cannot separate that because they say, you know what? Why are you telling me that? You think I'm a bad person? You think I'm a choker? No, we are not talking about you as, as Yure. We are talking about you as a tennis player. You as a person and you as a tennis player are two different things. And once you learn how to separate that, now we can have a conversation, coach and a player. And that's the distinction. That's the, that's the thing that separates great players from average players. That's the thing. They can step out, out the tennis player, say, you know what, coach, tell me what did I do at 3-2. Tell me what I should do at 5-4. Because we are talking about now, you and me, we are talking about a third person, which is a tennis player, which is completely different identity. And now we can be very critical. And now we can talk about it instead of being in the gloves and trying to not hurt each other's feelings. So for me, that's the difference between the champions and the players who are just not cutting it sometimes. If we put everything on the line, they are good physically, technically, all these kind of things. And that's for me very important when you work with athlete. First, you build him as a person. Then you build him as a tennis player. Yep. Only once you build him as a person and you created a rapport and respect with each other, we can talk about a tennis player because now you know I respect you as a person and our relationship is completely intact when we talk about you or we talk about me as a tennis player. Because after the match, we're going to talk about mistakes that has been done, what we can do better. We close that door and now we go for dinner, Yure and Izo. We go for dinner. We join uh, because we put Yure, tennis player, he's waiting tomorrow on the tennis court, okay? Right now, it's Yura and Izo, coach and player. Coach, and two friends. Yeah, friends. Friends, we are friends because that's a relationship. And that's how we build. That's how we get better because we trust each other. We talk this, and we don't talk about them tennis because we already spoke about tennis there. So that's also a lot of, including me when I was younger, I was doing mistakes. I would talk about Tennis here, tennis here, tennis here. I mean, I would talk to, I would destroy stuff because I was passionate, because I want to make the right thing, because I really want to uh, uh, fix it. You cannot fix it. Only person who can fix is a tennis player when they go on the court. And they are not fixing. They are going through the process. Whatever process it is, let it be because you don't know because what you think they should be maybe they can be double more maybe you as a coach are limiting them mm -hmm. do you ever ask yourself maybe my ideal version of them is limiting them because what they could become they cannot because of my vision of them mm -hmm. and that's you know that's the process i'm going through and trying to learn that's where i now I know that I don't know and that I learn from everybody I set my foot with and talk. And I'm just grateful to learn from anywhere and anyhow. Because as we said, it's, it's super wide and you don't know. And you can, you can have a best day today of practice tomorrow. She or he wakes up on the wrong foot, which is normal because it's life, because we are dealing with a human being. Mm -hmm. We are not dealing with the computers. Okay, I put the code. Yes, tomorrow the code is ready. It's not. It's a human being. Yeah, all the time adapting. Yeah. All, and that's it. And you know what's the best part? You think you're feeling bad, but you don't know how the other person is feeling. Yeah. You have no clue. So why should you even feel bad about yourself? Because you are preparing yourself for the result, negative result. So you're, you know, we don't want to go into that route but i'm just saying 
it's it's we don't know what we don't know we're dealing with the human beings and and we need to be guiding them guiding them and helping them grow you know and we need to build them as a people so they can deal with other stuff and then so we can help them become the players they want to be mm -hmm. and that's that's how i see it regardless of the gender regardless of the gender regardless yeah. because what i realized i was thinking men are no 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 men are better fakers better fakers because we have like but we are all we we are wired differently um we think we can multitask. We cannot think. We, nobody can multitask. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Some people think they can. Some people they can. But there's no multitasking. You can only think one thought at a time. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's how I see it. For me, I see it uh, uh, equally. And when I see that someone has developed a person and they are very strong about who they are and how they see themselves, then we can go easy towards the player. And some of uh, some of them, some of them, they think they de uh, develop that. But when you put them under the real pressure, something they didn't break, then you reveal that they are very connected with the ego and who they are in the tennis, and that's why they cannot break through certain things. So it's um, for me, at all, everybody at some stage we have a connection, you know. So it's my job as a coach is to it's to separate those things and to build strong person who can develop themselves in the strong, strong player. They can make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Are you drinking Coke or water? Those are decisions you need to make every day because you need to know you're not investing, you know, that, that donut, that, you know, if you eat one donut in a week, no problem. If you eat donut every single day, you, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. So what I want to say, you need to know, is this a habit? What kind of habits do you have? how it's going to impact you in the future and and you need to see the long 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 term picture yeah let's let's us uh, shed some light uh, for the end on the future uh, mm -hmm. with all that's going this year and all the personal stuff that are happening uh, how you see your future maybe or in general uh, see uh, not just like uh, plainly or simply but um, what are your, in a way, predictions, uh, feelings, uh, how are you? Because you've built up yourself, you've uh, mastered, uh, you are mastering yourself, you are learning on that to improve more and more, uh, to renew yourself. But the future is uh, very uncertain. And a lot of players now, if we talk about tennis and in general as well sport, uh, some do not know what the future holds and the uncertainty is becoming more uncertain and you don't know your value anymore. So these belief systems that we've talked about and that you've uh, uh, explained so diligently now in this call uh, is very important to be a person because tennis is luxury, as you said. Yeah. Who are you without tennis? Can you feel That's... happy without tennis, without results? Who can you be? How can you... Um, invest and uh, not invest how can you uh, contribute to life itself without yeah. playing tennis in a way maybe and uh, this has happened just only when people when players had injuries but now it's injury for the whole world and uh, you know yeah. tournaments will be how are you seeing this future and uh, how are players prepared uh, how are your players prepared for the future that is very uncertain very very good question you know because we are really living in a, at least in my my view in my lifespan is most uncertain time you know we, you, you don't not uncertain but you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring and how things will develop and this is where you need to, um, this is where you need to ask yourself who who you are and and your beliefs your core values and how you can put them in everyday action that you do doesn't matter is it like you're going to run today or you're going to go to the store or you're going you know people say you have some so much time now you can learn different skills and and you know the question is and it's always going to be how you can turn this situation in opportunity you know how how you can get better at something while you are while, while we are all waiting what's going to happen you know and some people are training some people are actually taking time 
to reset because they've been in the in the machine so long yeah. they they need a reset maybe this is you know same as the nature needed a reset right now i think a lot of people need to do a reset mm -hmm. so there's nothing wrong in in just resetting and finding time to 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 see you know why are you doing this you know ask yourself again the question what do you want to gain from it you know it's it's good time to do a lot of journaling it's good time to do a lot of reading and it's good time to connect to the the people you never connected before now you have a time yeah so but always what you do make sure that values that you have are in line with the actions that you do every single day no matter what you do no matter are you having a simple conversation or you're going to the store or you're going to go do the gym or you're going walk and just you know it's it's a very good time to align yourself and use your values in many different aspects and every single day that you're doing you know see how you can be a person of service you know you don't need to have a new job but you see how you can be person of a ser service to someone in your family or something like that because that's where the fulfillment for me comes in that's how i see it the for me it's about how you can put your skills in use so you can create value for others that's where the fulfillment comes in and that's where for me is much more important than happiness you know for me happiness is is like people see like ice cream you lick it and then you need to go another one and another one so basically you're never happy because you never produce ice cream from yourself you need to go buy it mm -hmm. you need to, we need to make sure that our happiness comes from our own resources something that we can produce daily not only because you hit the tennis ball you feel happy or fulfilled you need to make sure that whatever you do throughout the day fulfill you and that's when you need to ask yourself is a tennis the only thing okay so what if there's no tennis which can be right now so how do i fulfill myself so that's where it's a very good time to find more about yourselves and and see what really you know what other different skills you can put to use and create opportunities for others because more it's about others more is about you more you give more you receive the humbler you get the better you are and and this is a great time to practice those skills to learn that we are very small this is you know uh, it's just you know we are very very small and now you are you're confined in a small area of maybe 10 15 people you see per day okay so how can i make better life for the people that are around me that's what i think you should we should ask ourselves and once we do that you're not anymore in quarantine you're not anymore in isolation you're actually living life and you feel fulfilled if you're asking from others to make you feel better you'll never be you'll never be happy or fulfilled and that's what a lot of athletes fall in trap they are looking from others or other results or other actions to make them happy mm -hmm. and that's actually they cut their own legs because they never fulfill the potential that actually create much bigger impact and much bigger reward for them so that's that's how i see it great i i'm as well uh, excited for the future and i feel that after all this uh, it will be a completely different game uh, things are changing and shifting transforming uh, so um, i hope you will see more hugs on the tour uh, <laughs> more and more of this uh, less this strange competitiveness and because we are a unity we all see now that uh, well tennis players it's a unity now it's not like i go and compete uh, yes but you compete against someone so this will i think this is more coming in now so i'm yeah excited. well yeah i think so too i think so too and if not i think life will uh, life will make sure that we know the lesson again because yeah, yeah. Uh, what i learned is that um, things keep repeating themselves because we don't learn the lesson so learn, yeah. i i hope so for all of us we can we can learn what we need to learn for ourselves because we all have different lessons to learn not everybody has the same lesson you know not everybody priority is the same and that's that's completely fine mm -hmm. that's completely fine so it's we are on or we are all on our own journey and we are all in a different spaces so for me this this time 
will affect many different people differently. And that's completely, you know, some will, we all going to learn or not going to learn certain things. Iso, thank you very much. No, no, thank, you thank, much you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for, for being patient with me, with, the, with my microphone issues and, and stuff like that. We managed. How long yeah, you? but your patience and your, your energy was super nice. And I, I, really, pre I really enjoyed the conversation. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a great conversation sure for that me. And listeners and as well. Thank you so much. Thank you to your listeners. And I wish everybody, wish everybody to, 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 be, you know, to be grateful. For, for what they have and to be passionate about what they want. You know? So I think those two, those two energies are very good because gr gratitude mm -hmm. gives you enormous energy to, to be happy because you, already, you, you realize you already have what you need. And then when you're passionate about something, it's just a bonus. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for very kind words and very strong message. Thank you. Th Thank you so much. Thank you. Kako god si ti spreman, ja još nisam spreman, ali kako god si ti spreman. A je to, naš onaj pat ima. A je to, a je to, ali ja... Ne, ne, ne.